Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, today's date, it is uh, November 26th of 2016. And I just uh, got, I took some mail over to our, uh, up to the mailbox. The uh, mail lady usually gets here about this time, so she was here and I could give it to her. I was actually expecting a package, but it didn't uh, didn't come today. Uh, and of course, today's news is that Fidel Castro is dead. When I took the mail over to give to the mail lady, uh, I thought I had the package in the box, and she was finishing up the. So I um, I was waiting for my package, and there was a gentleman there my age or maybe older and uh, apparently he wasn't waiting for a package I, or I think he was just talking to her uh, he didn't remember me but a couple years ago maybe maybe three years ago at about 2 a.m. in the morning I was uh, out walking or coming back from someplace and he was coming back from someplace with a cart, unless he goes around with a cart loaded with stuff, uh, he was there with a cart loaded down with with uh, stuff, and so uh, we just struck up a conversation. But immediately, uh, he started telling me that uh, there was a place there that sells. Cigarettes and uh, drug paraphernalia. I guess it's not drug paraphernalia. That'd be against the law to sell. But it's one of those smoke shops that sells stuff that you're kind of surprised that they can sell. And he pointed it out. And I said, yeah, it's kind of suspicious that because <laughs> they have a lot of people there. You know, I mean, it, not at that time of night. But, uh, well, they were staying open. They stayed open all night. Anyway, I said, yeah. He said, oh, they're communist and uh, whatever. I said, oh. So, uh, I'm sorry about this microphone. I, I'm going to, I, I uh, this makes no way as it gets picked up. I'll replace this microphone. So, I talked with him and he said the Fort Worth Police Department were a bunch of communists and I forget who else were a bunch of communists. And uh, I tried to be... You know, oh, you know, and then finally, I, I don't remember what the final straw was. He said something, and I said, "Well, I agree with their philosophies, or what, you know, with wh whoever he was saying." I said, "Well, I, I agree politically uh, with that philosophy," and he says, "Then you're a communist. You are a communist. You're a communist. You're." And I said, "Yes, I'm a communist. I am a communist." And he just oh started cussing and took off. So. So that was uh, several years ago. Well, guess who was down at the mailbox? You know, I don't think he lived in this apartment complex then, but he lives there. He lives here now. Uh, I don't think he lived there. I don't know. But anyway, so he was inside this gated community. Well, not only that, I saw him later as I was as he was leaving. I, I saw him going up to his apartment. So anyway, he says, you know, down here now, at the, you know, Fidel Castro's dead. That communist is dead. And I, yep, uh, Fidel's dead. Then he says, you know, I forget what he, some more stuff, and I'm, I'm just letting it go. I'm just waiting for my package, which turns out I didn't have a package. And then he says, some, uh, yeah, Fidel Castro is a Satanist. He's a Satanist. And. I said, you know, I said, you're old enough to remember when Fidel Castro took, you know, when he took Cuba, took took over Cuba. And uh, I said, you should remember, too, that uh, Fidel Castro's heroes back before when he was still fighting to take Cuba over, that his, his heroes were uh, George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, 
and uh, Simon Bolivar. And he said, come in. And I said, well, you should remember too and know that our corporations had taken over Cuba. We, we ran, our corporations ran, you know, ran Cuba, did tremendous injustices to the people of Cuba. They were like slaves down there uh, being controlled by their Cuban government that we controlled. And, uh, of course, he's still going on. And uh, he said uh, something, and I said, too, remember, Fidel Castro, after he took Cuba over, he came to the United States, and he spent about two weeks here visiting the United States and trying to get to see President Eisenhower, but the Republicans refused to allow President Eisenhower to have a meeting with the communist. And, of course, he's, yeah, the yeah, communist. And uh, so then, then he's saying, you know, uh, uh, Satanists, they're all Satanists, and uh, Marx and Lenin and uh, all were, you know, Satanists. And I said, well... Lenin believed in communism, and communism doesn't believe in in uh, God, so I don't think that they would believe in Satanism and be Satanist followers. Yes, they have meetings. They have meetings. There's meetings all over. People all around here meet, and they're Satanists. And so I'm saying, it, there's more than going on than just this, and I'm saying, uh, well, oh, every time he would say something, too, it would be, Praise God. Praise God. And uh, then I uh, I said, well, I don't think so. I said, but do you have a list of... Uh, then he mentioned a, another couple, a conspiracy theory. I forget which one it was. I said, uh, do you believe in all the conspiracy theories? I said, do you have a list of them? Who else, what else do you believe in, the, these conspiracy theories? What else do you believe in? And he said, uh, the communists are behind, or the Satanists are behind them all. The Satanists are behind them all. And uh, so I said, well, I don't think that, uh, that, the, that Satanists are behind anything or that Satan matters at all. I said, uh, he said, uh, you're a Satanist. You're a Satanist. And I said, no, nah, I don't think I could be a Satanist because I don't believe in God. And if if I don't believe in God, why would I believe in Satan? And uh, then he, he said, you're, and I forget what he, I forget what he was raving about. And uh, so I did, well, and he said, that, what, what did you just do? What did you just do? And I said, oh, is that a Satanist uh, sign? Yes, that's one. You're one of them. You're a Satanist. <laughs> and, uh, so he said, I'm getting, I'm leaving. I'm leaving here. Uh, I'm not going to be around you. You're a communist and a Satanist. And I said, well... Go with God. Oh, that pissed him off. You know, that pissed him off. I said, you know, go go with God. And then he just stood there and just, I said, uh, goodbye. And he just stood there, stood there. So he just standing there. And then finally the mail lady uh, finished up her boxes on that side there. And she said, uh, Mr. Howard, I, I don't have any package for you. And I thought, oh, I was expecting a headset. I said, I guess it'll come tomorrow. And so then I walked around to leave, and then she came around too because she was finished and just needed to get uh, in her truck and deliver packages since the office was closed. And uh, But then she came around and she said, <laughs> pat me on the shoulder, Mr. Howard, I have never, I have never seen anything like, you know, never seen anything like that. She said, I couldn't believe what he called you. I said, well, this morning's entertainment was free. There will be there will be no charge for it. So I 
God. There are so many crazy people. Now, Fidel Castro, uh, let's talk about Fidel Castro. By the way, I spent five years in, uh, in Miami. And, you know, all my life for some reason, I guess because I'm a, a good Christian, all my life for some, but or all my life, I've really have not been prejudiced. But when I was in Cuba, when in uh, Cuba, uh oh, it slipped out. When I was uh, in Miami for five years, I decided I was going to let myself be prejudiced against Hispanic people, especially Cubans. Because one thing I found out, I think I mentioned this before. Uh, I can't stand this thing scraping. Hang on a second. I'm back. Uh, after being in, in uh, especially be, being in Florida for five years and in Miami for five years, I've just decided I'm going to allow myself to be prejudiced against Cubans. And I'll throw in the Hispanics too. Because of the way the way they took over Miami and also the way I worked for a year I worked a couple of, one year I worked as security at a um, shopping center and every one of the guys I worked with were just I think I think everyone well except for one I think or two they were all Hispanic and at one time or another, they all would, you know, be with me or, and they'd say, Jim. And they pointed, you know, that guy over there, uh, he's no good. And it would be, you know, he's, he, they're no good. He's, he's, he's from the Dominican Republic. Or he's no good. He's from Haiti. Or he's no, they all, I thought they would all sort of stick together. Uh, well, except for like the Brazilians who speak por Portuguese, but the people who spoke Spanish, I thought they'd have sort of a, a bond and they'd be sort of, I thought it'd all be them against me or against uh, English speaking only people or something, but it wasn't. They all hated each other. Uh, but uh, anyway, back to Fidel Castro. Fidel Castro, I may be wrong on this. I don't think that Fidel Castro was a communist because when Fidel Castro was fighting for the freedom of his country, uh, like I said, his heroes were George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and uh, Simon Bolivar. And he wanted to be like George Washington, which he, I mean, he wouldn't have been. Even if things hadn't gone the way they went, he still would not. There, there or couldn't be. No, Fidel Castro and very few people could be a George Washington, someone who had power, who received power, and who could have been George Washington if he wanted to be king. He could have been king. Uh, but he did. He's just unbelievable for that reason, our greatest president. Uh, I believe that Phil Castro believed that he was an educated man, and and uh, I think he believed, and I think he wanted to be George Washington to his country. I don't believe that he was a communist, but <laughs> he didn't show any signs of being a you know a communist, and it wasn't a communist revolution when they took you know took over. When I say they, I mean the Cuban people. When they took over Cuba, it wasn't a communist revolution. But uh, he did, when he took over, you know, he, okay, these corporations, United Fruit Company, United Telephone Company, uh, 
all of these companies had corporations, U.S. corporations had taken over Cuba, and they worked through Batista, of course, the president, you know, uh, bribes and whatever, and they just ran amok. Total, you know, they, down there they had to total freedom to do and act however they wanted to act. If you were a worker and for United Fruit or some other company and down there uh, and you gave any kind of a problem, you'd just be eliminated and uh, I don't think the orders, I don't think that somebody in New York City, uh, you know, at United Fruit or United Telephone, where are the other big ones, AT&T, I don't think the, the chairman of the board was there, uh, Jose that, that uh, he needs to be executed, so send the word down. They didn't have to do that. It was just they had the deal with, you know, Batista. So Fidel Castro took over, and he said, okay, this is it. You know, we're, you oppressed the people. These corporations have oppressed the people, so, you know, we're taking them, we're taking them over. And, of course, before Fidel won you know, the revolution, uh, Republicans were already saying, because he was fighting corporations and the whole bit, that he was a communist. No signs of it at all that could be found that he was a communist. But, uh, so then the, re then the Republicans in the United States, say, we told you he was a communist, he took over the corporate, you know. And they're just screaming and foaming at the mouth and just going fucking crazy. And so Fidel uh, says, oh, well, okay. Uh, Cuba is going to be in charge of our country. Uh, we will allow these corporations, you know, American corporations, we will allow them. But they're going to be regulated. They're going to be controlled. And they're going to have to share their, treat the people right. And they're going to have to share their profits with the people of Cuba, and the Republicans, you know, no, no, fuck you, you know, we're, you know, we will destroy you, we want, there's no deal with you, you're a communist. So, I, uh, I should have looked it up. Fidel Castro came to the, there's about his youth, uh, he came to the United States, let's see, guerrilla war, provisional government, 1959. Well, I can't find it. I should have highlighted it. But I think it was, he came to the United States, and I remember, you know, I was alive then. I remember watching on TV. He came to the United States to talk to presidents of the United States. Eisenhower, he wanted to talk to, you know, he was the head of the president of Cuba, the leader of Cuba. They were still trying to form their government but he was the and he came and the Republicans just no way I mean I think Eisenhower actually what would would have been the kind of man who wanted to meet with Fidel Castro and work out a deal and prevent hostilities and the Republicans were just every outlet every the John Birch Society every Republican organization and every Republican in Congress, that president should not meet, cannot meet with that communist, that bomb thrower, that, uh, you know. So Fidel Castro hang around for about two weeks trying to see the president of the United States, and the president of the United States would not talk to Fidel Castro. So Fidel, Ca and of course we cut off, did everything, our government cut off everything we could to strangle Castro to make uh, make that a, a failure and uh, of course then Fidel Castro goes to uh, he came to the United States first so then he goes to the USSR and he, they greet him as a hero parades flags kisses hugs and Fidel Castro says he needs help, and they say, we'll give you every, everything you, whatever you need, we will give you. you, you are. And so Fidel Castro 
starts spouting communism, you know, uh, imperialism, uh, all the, the, the catchphrases or whatever. Now, I say that I don't believe that Fidel Castro was a communist, and I think, but if he wasn't a communist, then he deserves, well, I think he became one, but he deserves Academy Awards every year for the speeches that he, he makes, speeches of going for hours, spouting communism. And uh, so if he wasn't a communist, of course he would have just, just decided to become one then because of uh, the United States not being Cuba's friend and uh, doing everything it could to. But Fidel Castro was no, at the, you know, at the point that he becomes a communist or starts spouting his communism, which, which I believe at that point he had to be, or he had to have be, be decided to become one. But he certainly was no hero from that point on. And then him allowing uh, the Soviet Union to put missiles into Cuba, ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads into Cuba. My God, I mean, for, for that... Uh, for that alone, I mean, that's the closest... We came very close. If it hadn't been for President Kennedy and the way he handled things, uh, we we would have gone to it would have gone to into a nuclear war, and the United States and the USSR would have put both and Cuba and a lot of other places would have been totally you know this would be Armageddon. It would be. Uh, what are all these movies where the world is devastation and, you know, that's what would have happened if uh, President Kennedy and the people around him, because uh, President Kennedy, like the chief of the Air Force, uh, oh, how can I forget his? Colin Powell's name, but that's not it. Uh, the guy who had headed up SAC, Strategic Air Command or whatever. In that instance, he was, you know, like one of the key advisors for the Air Force and for the military. He was there telling, you know, um, John F. Kennedy, let me let loose the nuclear bombs on them. I'll, we'll take them out in a second. We'll just do this or whatever. And then, of course, he was pushing also for invasion. If he couldn't nuke them, he wanted to. What we found out a few years ago, just a few, when, well, with the collapse of the uh, Soviet Union, when it collapsed, then we got other information. And what we found out was, which we did not know, was that the Russian military general who was there, the missiles were being, they were getting ready to get them operational, but the Russian general had tactical nuclear, some tactical nuclear weapons, not very many, I'm thinking one, two, or three, but he said, he was interviewed, you know, when this information came out, that he had the authority to launch those, the fire the tactical nuclear weapons. And if our invasion force had landed on Cuba, he would have used a tactical nuclear weapon, which would have totally wiped out our entire military landing force. It wouldn't have been like D Day, where a lot are killed, but you know, it would have been, he would have launched that. That would have been the end of all of our troops. All of them would have been wiped out and probably some ships that were unloading them and were out there, naval ships, 
they would have been gone. And the United States then would have had absolutely no choice. It would have been a disaster, but we'd have had no choice but to launch, you know, nuclear weapons against the Soviet Union. They would have launched, launched against us. So President Kennedy really handled that situation right by not going... You know, and uh, so that worked out. But Fidel Castro just about, you know, their little island. And uh, Fidel Castro just about brought an end to <clears throat> to the world. So, so Fidel Castro's dead. The people in Miami, the, a lot of Cubans in Miami are celebrating. Uh, that I mean, okay, let them celebrate. They've been waiting for so long for him to be dead so they could celebrate or whatever. But uh, now Castro is dead. Of course, he hasn't been actually running the government for years. His brother is. Now's the time to put an end to this stupidity and let's... Uh, have good relations with Cuba and Cuba can let our corporations come in but uh, we're not going to be doing what we did in the past of totally con you know owning Cuba and uh, so Fidel is dead I uh, when the Bay of Pigs invasion took effect, I was convinced that it was going to be a success or whatever. I tuned in. I did a video about uh, the day that, the morning that I woke up and it was on the news that uh, the President of the United States will be making an address to the nation tonight and nobody knows what's it, what it is about it it maybe there's some type of problem with Cuba there may be some type of problem with uh, Berlin it uh, may be something with China we just don't know what it is and I did some tuning around on my shortwave radio and then I knew that it was the problem was with whatever it was with with Cuba and so uh, but I I told that story uh, on the uh, when the Bay of Pigs invasion took place, and it was on the news that I tuned in to uh, tuned around, listened to you know some various military channels and what have you, but then I tuned into Radio Havana Cuba and I had it going in the background, and I was waiting for <clears throat> Cuban freedom fighters and maybe U.S. Uh, Rangers or something to come busting in the Radio Havana Cuba studio and to take the microphone away and say, this is a voice of the free uh, free Cuba. Cuba has been liberated. <laughs> and of course it didn't happen. I also tuned in to Radio Swan on Swan Island, which I think is right off the, I remember, right off the coast of Honduras. It was broadcasting for, to Cuba for years on a shortwave and AM radio and uh, supposed to be uh, independent free you know Cuban radio state but it, we all knew it was a CIA operation and of course when the Bay of Pig them I don't speak Spanish but we could you know you could hear them you know giving orders to fictitious you know like they were broadcasting and they'd be saying you know I don't know Resistant group, you know, 12A, rise up now and strike, you know, and and then giving orders to, you know, military group, which they were just putting out propaganda or whatever, so they kind of blew their cover. They were supposedly, the radio station was owned by the Gibraltar Steamship Company, which owned the radio station. Well, that was a CIA operation. I got a verification letter from because I listened to Radio Swan and sent in reception reports and 
requested a QSL card, but I, they didn't have QSL cards, but they sent me a, a letter on uh, CIA stationery. I mean, it didn't say CIA, you know, Gibraltar Steamship Company. And thank you very much for listening to Radio Swan. We verify your, you know. So I lived through the, before, when I was in high school, and that would be shortly before Fidel Castro um, and the Cubans won their revolution. There was a terrible movie. I mean, it was, I, I saw it with my friends at the drive-in, drive-in theater. I hope there was two movies showing because, and it was a movie uh, about Fidel Castro's revolution and uh, how he was a freedom fighter and what have you. And it was showing, and, and it was a terribly made, uh, terribly made movie. I can't remember now if it was documentary style or if they had actors portraying people. can't remember now, but, I mean, it was a bad movie. Not something that a bunch of teenagers want to see. Well, of course, we were in our cars making out with our girlfriends, so we probably didn't see the screen anyway. So that is, uh, that is it. This will be the last day I think for this headset because I have another one coming I guess now tomorrow and uh, I will replace this scrapey one with this thank you very much for uh, thank you very much for watching by the way I haven't uh, <laughs> I haven't bought anything uh, for Black Friday or Cyber Monday coming up, I saw on, I, I think it was actually listed on CNN, they had some of the things that were Cyber Monday, and it started already, Amazon has started it today. I think it, it was a 50-inch TV. I know it was bigger than 40-inch. A uh, For $150. I don't need a big screen TV, but for $150. That's supposed to be for Cyber Monday. I wonder if they're all, and they, of course they started it today, so they may have already sold out all that they have. So, there is Fidel Castro, Cuba's former leader. Thank you again very much for watching.